The Jin Song Wars were a series of conflicts between the Church and Jin Dynasty and Han Chinese Song Dynasty. In 1115, the Jurchens rebelled against their overlords, the Katan Liao dynasty, and declared the formation of the Jin. Allying with the Song against their common enemy the Liao, the Jin promised to return to the Song the territories in northern China that had fallen under Liao control since 938. The Jurchens' quick defeat of the Liao combined with Song military failures made the Jin reluctant to cede these territories. After a series of failed negotiations that embittered both sides, the Jurchens attacked the Song in November 1125, dispatching one army towards Tai Yuan and the other towards Kaifeng, the Song capital. Surprised by the news of an invasion, the Song general stationed in Tai Yuan retreated from the city, which was besieged and later captured. As the Second Jin army approached the capital, Emperor Hui Song of the Song abdicated and fled south. A new emperor, Qin Zong, was enthroned. The Jurchens began a siege against Kai Feng in 1126, but Qin Zong negotiated for their retreat from the capital after he agreed to pay a large annual indemnity. Qin Zong reneged on the deal and ordered Song forces to defend the prefectures instead of fortifying the capital. The Jin resumed their war against the Song and again besieged Kaifeng in 1127. The Chinese emperor was captured in an event known as the Jingkang Incident. The capital was looted, and the Song lost northern China to the Jin. Remnants of the Song retreated to southern China and, after brief stays in several temporary capitals, eventually relocated to Hangzhou. The retreat of the Song court marked the end of the Northern Song era and the beginning of the Southern Song. The Jurchens tried to conquer southern China in the 1130s, but they were bogged down by a pro-Song insurgency in the north and a counter-offensive by the Song generals Ufei, Han Shijong, and others. The generals regained some territories but retreated on the orders of the Southern Song Emperor, who supported a peaceful resolution to the war. The Treaty of Shaoxing in 1142 settled the boundary between the two empires along the Huai River, but conflicts between the two dynasties continued until the fall of the Jin in 1234. A campaign against the Song by the fourth Jin Emperor, Prince Haling, was unsuccessful. He lost the Battle of Kaishi and was later assassinated by his own dust affected officers. An invasion of the Jin motivated by Song revanchism was also unsuccessful. A decade later, the Jin launched an abortive military campaign against the Song in 1217 to compensate for the territory that they had lost to the invading Mongols. The Song formed an alliance with the Mongols in 1233, and in the following year jointly captured Kaizhou, the last refuge of the Jin Emperor. The Jin dynasty collapsed that year in 1234. After the demise of the Jin, the Song dynasty itself became a target of the Mongols and fell in 1279. The wars engendered an era of technological, cultural, and demographic changes in China. Battles between the Song and Jin brought about the introduction of various gunpowder weapons. The siege of Dean in 1132 was the first recorded appearance of the Fire Lance, an early ancestor of firearms. There were also reports of battles fought with primitive gunpowder bombs like the incendiary Huopeo or the exploding Tai Huopeo incendiary arrows, and other related weapons. Jurchen migrants settled in the conquered territories and assimilated with the local culture. The Jin government instituted a centralized imperial bureaucracy modeled on previous Chinese dynasties, basing their legitimacy on Confucian philosophy. Song refugees from the North resettled in southern China. The North was the cultural center of China, and its conquest by the Jin diminished the international stature of the Song dynasty. The Southern Song, however, quickly returned to economic prosperity, and trade with the Jin was lucrative despite decades of warfare. The capital of the Southern Song, Hangzhou, expanded into a major city for commerce. The Fragile Song-Jin Alliance, 
The Jurchens were a Tungusic-speaking group of semi-agrarian tribes inhabiting Manchuria in Northeast Asia. Many of the Jurchen tribes were vassals of the Liao dynasty, an empire ruled by the nomadic Khitans that included most of modern Mongolia, a portion of northern China, northeast China, northern Korea, and parts of the Russian Far East. To the south of the Liao lay the Han Chinese Song Empire. The Song and Liao were at peace but since a military defeat to the Liao in 1005, the Song paid its northern neighbor an annual indemnity of 200,000 bolts of silk and 100,000 ounces of silver. In 1114, the chieftain Wanyanaguda united the disparate Jurchen tribes and led a revolt against the Liao. In 1115 he named himself Emperor of the Jin Golden Dynasty. Informed by a Liao defector of the success of the Jurchen uprising, the Song Emperor Hui Song and his highest military commander the eunuch Tongguan saw the Liao weakness as an opportunity to recover the 16 prefectures, a line of fortified cities and passes that the Liao had annexed from the Shatua Turk later Jin in 938 and that the Song had repeatedly but unsuccessfully tried to reconquer. The Song thus sought an alliance with the Jin against their common enemy the Liao. Because the land routes between the Song and Jin were controlled by the Liao, diplomatic exchanges had to occur by traveling across the Bohai Sea. Negotiations for an alliance began secretly under the pretense that the Song wanted to acquire horses from the kittens. Song diplomats traveled to the Jin court to meet Aguda in 1118, while Jurchen envoys arrived in the Song capital Kaifeng the next year. At the beginning the two sides agreed to keep whatever Liao territory they would seize in combat. In 1120, Aguda agreed to cede the 16 prefectures to the Song in exchange for transfer to the Jin of the annual tributary payments that the Song had been giving the Liao. By the end of 1120, however, the Jurchens had seized the Liao supreme capital and offered the Song only parts of the 16 prefectures. Among other things, the Jin would keep the Liao western capital of Datong at the western end of the 16 prefectures. The two sides agreed that the Jin would now attack the Liao central capital, whereas the Song would seize the Liao southern capital, Jianjing. The joint attack against the Kittens had been planned for 1121, but it was rescheduled for 1122. In February 23 of that year, the Jurchens captured the Liao central capital as promised. The Song delayed their entry into the war because it diverted resources to fighting the Western Chia in the northwest and suppressing a large popular rebellion in the south. When a Song army under Tong Guan's command finally attacked Yanjing in May 1122, the smaller forces of the weakened Liao repelled the invaders with ease. Another attack failed in the fall. Both times, Tong was forced to retreat back to Kaifeng. After the first attack, Aguda changed the terms of the agreement and only promised Yanjing and six other prefectures to the Song. In early 1123 it was Jurchen forces that easily took the Liao southern capital. They sacked it and enslaved its population. The quick collapse of the Liao led to more negotiations between the Song and the Jin. Jurchen military success and their effective control over the 16 prefectures gave them more leverage. Aguda grew increasingly frustrated as he realized that despite their military failures the Song still intended to seize most of the prefectures. In the spring of 1123 the two sides finally set the terms of the first Song Jin Treaty. Only seven prefectures would be returned to the Song, and the Song would pay an annual indemnity of 300,000 packs of silk and 200,000 tails of silver to the Jin, as well as a one-time payment of one million strings of copper coins to compensate the Jurchens for the tax revenue they would have earned had they not returned the prefectures. In May 1123 Tong Guan and the Song armies entered the Luta Zhanjing war against the Northern Song. The collapse of the Song Jin alliance barely one month after the Song had recovered Zhanjing, Zhang Ju, who had served as military governor of the Liao prefecture of Pingzhou about 200 kilometers east of Yanjing killed the main Jin official in that city and turned it over to the Song. 
The Jurchens defeated his armies a few months later and Zhang took refuge in Yanjing. Even though the Song agreed to execute him in late 1123, this incident put tension between the two states, because the 1123 treaty had explicitly forbidden both sides from harboring defectors. In 1124, Song officials further angered the Jin by asking for the cession of nine more border prefectures. The new Jin Emperor Taizong, Aguda's brother and successor, hesitated. But warrior princes Wan Yanzongan and Wan Yanzongguang vehemently refused to give them any more territory. Taizong eventually granted two prefectures, but by then the Jin leaders were ready to attack their southern neighbor. Before they could invade the Song, the Jurchens reached a peace agreement with their western neighbors the Tang at Western Chia in 1124. The following year near the Ordos Desert, they captured Tian Zuo, the last emperor of the Liao, putting an end to the Liao dynasty for good. Ready to end their alliance with the Song, the Jurchens began preparations for an invasion. First campaign in November 1125 Taizong ordered his armies to attack the Song. The defection of Zhang Zhu two years earlier served as the Kazhu Speli. Two armies were sent to capture the major cities of the Song. Siege of Taiyu and the Western Army, led by Wan Yanzongan, departed from Datong and headed towards Taiyu and through the mountains of Shanxi, on its way to the Song western capital Luoyang. The Song forces were not expecting an invasion and were caught off guard. The Chinese general Tongguan was informed of the military expedition by an envoy he had sent to the Jin to obtain the cession of two prefectures. The returning envoy reported that the Jurchens were willing to forego an invasion if the Song ceded control of Hebei and Shanxi to the Jin. Tongguan retreated from Taiyuan and left command of his troops to Wang Bing. Jin armies besieged the city in mid-January 1126. Under Wang Bing's command, Tai Yuan held on long enough to stop the Jurchen troops from advancing to Luoyang. First siege of Kaifeng Meanwhile, the Eastern Army, commanded by Wang Yanzongguang, was dispatched towards Yanjing and eventually the Song capital Kaifeng. It did not face much armed opposition. Zongguang easily took Yanjing, where Song general and former Liao governor Guo Yeoshi switched his allegiances to the Jin. When the Song had tried to reclaim the 16 prefectures, they had faced fierce resistance from the Han Chinese population. Yet when the Jurchens invaded that area, the Han Chinese did not oppose them at all. By the end of December 1125, the Jin army had seized control of two prefectures and re-established Jurchen rule over the 16 prefectures. The Eastern Army was nearing Kaifeng by early 1126. Fearing the approaching Jin army, Song Emperor Hui Song planned to retreat south. The emperor deserting the capital would have been viewed as an act of capitulation, so court officials convinced him to abdicate. There were few objections. Rescuing an empire in crisis from destruction was more important than preserving the rituals of imperial inheritance. In January 1126, a few days before the New Year, Hui Song abdicated in favor of his son and was demoted to the ceremonial role of retired emperor. The Jurchen forces reached the Yellow River on January 27, 1126, two days after the New Year. Hui Song fled Kaifeng the next day, escaping south and leaving the newly enthroned Emperor Kinzong in charge of the capital. Kaifeng was besieged on January 31, 1126. The commander of the Jurchen army promised to spare the city if the Song submitted to Jin as a vassal, forfeited the prime minister and an imperial prince's prisoners, ceded the Chinese prefectures of Hekian, Tai Yuan, and Zhongshan, and offered an indemnity of 50 million taels of silver, 5 million taels of gold, 1 million packs of silk. 1 million packs of satin, 10,000 horses, 10,000 mules, 10,000 cattle, and 1,000 camels. 
this indemnity was worth about 180 years of the annual tribute the song had been paying to the Jinn since 1123, with little prospect of help from afar arriving. Infighting broke out in the song court between the officials who supported the Jin offer and those who opposed it. Opponents of the treaty like Li Gang rallied around the proposal of remaining in defensive positions until reinforcements arrived in Jurchen. Supplies ran out. They botched an ambush against the Jin that was carried out at night and were replaced by officials who supported peace negotiations. The failed attack pushed Qin Zong into meeting the Jurchen demands, and his officials convinced him to go through with the deal. The Song recognized Jin control over the three prefectures. The Jurchen army ended the siege in March after 33 days. Second campaign almost as soon as the Jin armies had left Kaifeng. Emperor Qin Zong reneged on the deal and dispatched two armies to repel the Jurchen troops attacking Tai Yuan and bolster the defenses of Zhongshan and Hekian. An army of 90,000 soldiers and another of 60,000 were defeated by Jin forces by June. A second expedition to rescue Tai Yuan was also unsuccessful, accusing the Song of violating the agreement and realizing the weakness of the Song. The Jin generals launched a second punitive campaign, again dividing their troops into two armies. Wan Yunzongan, who had withdrawn from Tai Yuan after the Kaifeng Agreement and left a small force in charge of the siege, came back with his western army. Overwhelmed, Tai Yuan fell in September 1126, after 260 days of siege, when the Song court received news of the fall of Tai Yuan. The officials who had advocated defending the empire militarily fell from favor again and were replaced by councillors who favored appeasement. In mid-December the two Jurchen armies converged on Kaifeng for the second time that year. Second siege of Kaifeng after the defeat of several Song armies in the north, Emperor Kunzong wanted to negotiate a truce with the Jin. But he committed a massive strategic blunder when he commanded his remaining armies to protect prefectural cities instead of Kaifeng. Neglecting the importance of the capital, he left Kaifeng defended with fewer than 100,000 soldiers. The Song forces were dispersed throughout China, powerless to stop the second church and siege of the city. The Jin assault commenced in mid-December 1126. Even as fighting raged on, Qin Zong continued to sue for peace but Jin demands for territory were enormous. They wanted all provinces north of the Yellow River. After more than 20 days of heavy combat against the besieging forces, Song defenses were decimated and the morale of Song soldiers was on the decline. On January 9, 1127, the Jurchens broke through and started to loot the conquered city. Emperor Qin Zong tried to appease the victors by offering the remaining wealth of the capital. The royal treasury was emptied and the belongings of the city's residents were seized. The Song Emperor offered his unconditional surrender a few days later. Qin Zong, the former Emperor Hui Song, and members of the Song court were captured by the Jurchens as hostages. They were taken north to Manchuria, where they were stripped of their royal privileges and reduced to commoners. The former emperors were humiliated by their captors. They were mocked with disparaging titles like muddled virtue and double muddled. In 1128 the Jin made them perform a ritual meant for war criminals. The harsh treatment of the Song royalty softened after the death of Hui Song in 1135. Titles were granted to the deceased monarch and his son Qin Zong was promoted to duke, a position with a salary. Reasons for Song failure Many factors contributed to the Song's repeated military blunders and subsequent loss of northern China to the Jurchens. Traditional accounts of Song history held the venality of Hui Song's imperial court responsible for the decline of the dynasty. These narratives condemned Hui Song and his officials for their moral failures. Early Song emperors were eager to enact political reforms and revive the ethical framework of Confucianism, but the enthusiasm for reforms gradually died after the reformist Wang Anshi's expulsion as Chancellor in 1076. 
Corruption marred the reign of Hui Song, who was more skilled as a painter than as a ruler. Hui Song was known for his extravagance, and funded the costly construction of gardens and temples while rebellions threatened the state's grip on power. A modern analysis by Ari Daniel Levine places more of the blame on deficiencies in the military and bureaucratic leadership. The loss of northern China was not inevitable. The military was overextended by a government too assured of its own military prowess. Hui Song diverted the state's resources to failed wars against the Western Chia. The Song insistence on a greater share of Liao territory only succeeded in provoking their Jin allies. Song diplomatic oversights underestimated the Jin and allowed the unimpeded rise of Jurchen military power. The state had plentiful resources, with the exception of horses, but managed its assets poorly during battles. Unlike the expansive Han and Tang empires that preceded the Song, the Song did not have a significant foothold in Central Asia where a large proportion of its horses could be bred or procured. As Song General Li Gang noted, without a consistent supply of horses the dynasty was at a significant disadvantage against Jurchen cavalry. The Jin were victorious only because they used iron-shielded cavalry, while we opposed them with foot soldiers.